hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about virtual environments on the 53D series. For those that aren't aware, when you buy a network attached storage device it has changed so much since the old days of it just basically being a bog standard hard drive over the internet or the network. Network attached storage has far surpassed that and has now reached the point where it is a complete operating system with its own apps, its own thrills, its own spills and basically a device that can rival that of independent operating systems like OS X and Microsoft Windows. So what I want to look at today on the 53D series is the ways in which you can create virtual environments. These are kind of micro and digitally only alternatives to that of physical computers and physical devices. We're going to be looking at three apps. We're going to be looking at Virtualization Station, the one that we've covered the most on this channel over the last few weeks. And I'm going to try and skip over that a little bit just because I have an entire dedicated video on this where we're going to be using it for speed tests in another video, as well as already heavily featuring Virtualization Station recently. So if you don't want to learn more about that uh, then do check out the last videos over the last couple of weeks on both this and the other YouTube channel. We're also going to be looking at Container Station and Linux Station. Um, it should be mentioned they aren't the only ways in which you can create virtual environments uh, and you know the term virtual environment can mean many many things. For example you have BoxSafe down here that will let you synchronize with the likes of G Suite and Office 365 uh, and on those third-party kind of CRM and CMS systems you can create a localized synchronized copy of that with BoxSafe but that's not really what we're talking about. Same with Hybrid Mount where you can mount storage from another NAS as if to make it look localized uh, or from another cloud pl uh, place. Yes that is a form of virtualized storage but it's not really the same thing. What we're talking about is the means to create um, a, a digital only version of something that generally will only be physical. So in the case of D3 let's look at that first one. Now virtualized, uh, Virtualization Station 3 is still to my mind the very best VM tool out in the market today. You will need uh, at least a dual core Intel based NAS uh, to take advantage of this and I recommend at least a quad core and at least four gig of memory although you can get by on two gig you will not do as well now I'm utilizing the TS653D today and this series of videos is largely centered around the 53D series but what I will say is that the majority of the things I'm going to talk about today are largely accessible from any QNAP NAS with a dual or quad core Intel based processor and two to four gig of memory now there's lots of reasons why I like Virtualization Station 3 the most. One of them is the idea that you can largely host any kind of VM. You can use backed up images if you so choose, such as if you've got a USB drive that's got an image that you utilize from a PC uh, that you've created. And we did a whole series of videos uh, before uh, COVID and remote desktop became so vogue, but you're able to restore uh, a VM that you created from a local PC using a bunch of tools and then recreate your physical PC as a emulated virtual version on your NAS. That was an option that was open to you. Do check out my video on that. You can uh, create localized backups of the VM um, that you create and then do snapshot backups or restore an old one. On top of that, you can also download uh, VMs directly from the tool. If you go to the top, you can try Windows 3.10 VM and then download a copy of Windows 10, a trial edition, and it will install this VM on your computer ready to go, which is what we're doing here for a test coming soon. You can import existing VMs that are in different versions, standard ISO, IMG, v, um, Visual, um, was it VHD, Virtual Hard Drive, VMDK, VMK, every single kind of virtual machine image you can think of, chances are you can create it. And even if you don't have a disk readily available, uh, an ISO or a digital image of a virtual computer, PC, Android, even Hackintosh in some cases, but lots of Ubuntu and Linux um, centric ones as well, you can actually create 
a generic PC environment without even trying. So think about when you buy a computer that has no operating system. You can create a blank virtual computer here. You can say you want it to be Android. You can say what version of Android, how many CPUs from the NAS do you want to assign, how much memory you want to assign, and then you can add the boot disk. But if you don't add the boot disk, you've still created a virtual computer. You can create a sandbox Windows environment. So if you want to test something like FreeNAS or TrueNAS, as it calls it, if you want to use any operating system software out there that says you need to build a computer and have the CD in the disk drive and then turn the computer on and then boot from it, you can create a basic no OS computer here and then load whatever you want, just like you would from a local PC. And you can do that with either a digital version of the disk in a form of an ISO or something like that, or you can even connect a USB drive, a USB um, optical disk drive, an old DVD writer drive, which you can pick up now for 10 or 20 quid, connect it via USB to your QNAP, and then directly pull the ISO onto this device. You can even attach U, um, CD drives over USB directly to your virtual machine. There's so many options open to you for this virtual computer and it's a wonderful hybrid of a physical system combined with that of a digital one. Now there are lots of options open to you and lots of different options with regards to VMs. There's even an emulated marketplace for different VMs. So if you want to take advantage of that great firewall um, um, freeware software, PFSense, that we've seen utilized in the Guardian series, you can download it here. Same thing goes for Zabbix for a lot of those IT-based network appliances. Or you can take advantage of AWS gateways and AWS file storage systems and add those as virtual environments running in parallel uh, or in tandem even, with their online counterparts. You can make sure to have a copy of your existing systems, be they PC or others, and then create images and store them. And if, in the event of failure, or if you want to bench test certain updates or um, systems and environments on your OS and you don't want to risk your computer, you can create a virtual copy here. There are so many ways in which you can download tools that will allow you to create VMs. And Virtualization Station is the one that's probably the most approachable of the three. Now, the other two, Container Station and Linux Station, go in slightly different directions and get easier as we go along. Now, Container Station, on the face of it, seems incredibly intimidating. Now, in the same way Virtualization Station allows you to create virtual environments of whole computers, Container Station allows you to ultimately deploy applications and much smaller programs without an OS. These days, there are a lot, and I really do mean a lot, of different containers out there, thanks to companies like Docker as well, that have created um, micro compact alternatives to full OS programs. So say for example, you want to create a brand new container. They've got a whole store for you to download new ones. You can access huge databases of different containers. So say we look up, let's see if it's on there yet, My Media. Is My Media available? Yes, it is. For those who aren't aware, My Media is an application to allow your photos, music, and video to be findable and deployable from the Amazon Alexa system. QNAP doesn't have its own application, but if you install this Docker and run the Docker within Container Station, pointing all of the media directories to your media directories for photos, music, um, movies, and more, you can then action your Amazon Alexa to play things thanks to this container. Now, prior to this, if you wanted to install this app, you needed an entire copy of Windows to run it on, or Ubuntu or any Linux OS, but ultimately, you needed an OS. Thanks to Container Station, you can run apps on their own. People have created these Docker applications that allow you to run many popular applications as these containers simply 
with the um, architecture of Docker and Container Station and these kind of items. If you're running smart homes and want to link smart systems or unify setups, there's a number of container applications that have been designed that really do take a lot of the hassle out of the processes with the added bonus that, let's put surveillance, with the added bonus that the resources utilized by a container are always less than that of the ones that are utilized by a full OS because the OS needs a layer on top of all of the hardware, the CPU and the memory to run the operating system. And then on top of that, you have applications. Running containers on this Linux NAS platform utilizes significantly fewer resources and ultimately means you can run more things simultaneously. And we have a wealth of different options available in the application center here in Container Station, there's lots open to you. We will be doing a video on the My Media for Amazon Alexa very, very soon. But I do recommend you check out some of the things you can do with containers, and it can be a great hobby on the side. It's not even as hard as it sounds to set these up for the first time. Now, let's move on to the easiest of the three virtual platform tools, Linux Station. Now, Linux Station has been around for a while. But what a lot of people don't realize is it ultimately allows most QNAP NASes that have got an Intel based CPU and an HDMI output to have a second OS. You can install directly from Linux Station a fresh copy of Ubuntu. There's three versions of Ubuntu on there with Ubuntu 18.04 being the latest one available. And it allows you to have a virtual machine. You don't have to muck around, no complexity is required. You just install the app from the app center. Then in the app center, you, when it opens up, it will ask you which version of Ubuntu you want to download. I selected 18.4, it downloads it, it deploys it, and you're done. You've now got a Linux Ubuntu virtual machine on your computer. You can access it with a keyboard, video, and mouse using the HDMI output of your NAS, so you can create a standalone computer on your NAS. At the same time, your NAS can still be used for surveillance, Plex, and more, all running in the background with multiple users at once. Alternatively, you can access your Linux virtual machine or, or the Ubuntu virtual machine directly via the web browser if you so choose. What you're looking at here is a um, remote desktop version of that VM. We can log in. We enter with the same login credentials that we've created. The screen resolution there might not be the quickest. We are using OBS recording here in the background, and that always has an impact on the overall performance of any graphical endeavor we do for these videos. But now it's gonna open up and run that Ubuntu version 18 VM there for us to access via the browser. It's logging in for the first time, so just like any OS, it just needs to boot up for the first time, but there's lots of settings we can change. We can change the network adapter, we can add a USB disk drive if we choose, so we can run applications off disks. We can choose um, if we've got multiple HDMIs, which ones we want, as well as change the resolution if we so choose. Restarting the VM, freezing the VM, or more, depending on whatever it is that we want to run within our virtual machine environment. Those that are unfamiliar with Ubuntu will know that this is, you know, a pretty straightforward and easy to use tool. It has regular updates, it has lots of apps and tools for you to set the device up for the very first time. There's loads of things and pretty much anything you can do on a Windows PC, you can do in Ubuntu. It just looks slightly different. There's an app center if you want to install lots of applications. And again, there's loads of apps to use with it in Ubuntu, most of which are almost always free. On top of that, we can run uh, you've got um, access to the NAS and all of its own applications directly from this virtual machine. And bear in mind that setting up the right um, connection with your uh, MyQNAP Cloud means that you can access this Linux virtual machine anywhere in the world. So now you've got a desktop computer you can access anywhere where you've got an internet connection your own bespoke private virtual machine that can be deployed in approximately seven clicks from the QNAP desktop and is by far the easiest of the three. Ultimately, what I'm saying is the 53D series is a very affordable and easy way to take advantage and learn about virtual machine environments, as well as taking advantage of things like Plex, multimedia, 
backups and more. In my next series, uh, in my next video in this series, I will be looking at the performance of this device in terms of Plex Media Server with 4K and 1080p transcoding and see how it, how it fares. But otherwise, if you've got any questions about this device, whether it's suitable for your storage needs, or even just if you want to learn more about it, let me know in the comments or click subscribe and click like if you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.